Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Basic Oscilloscope Operation. In this short presentation, we'll introduce you to the settings needed to make basic voltage versus time measurements using an oscilloscope. Let's start by explaining what an oscilloscope is and how it's used. The main purpose of an oscilloscope is to measure and display voltage versus time. Oscilloscopes, or just scopes, were one of the earliest electronic test and measurement instruments, dating back to the 1930s. Scopes are widely used for designing, testing, and debugging almost anything that runs on electricity. And if there's only one piece of test equipment in a lab, most of the time it's a scope. Scopes show voltage versus time for periodic or repeating waveforms, but modern digital storage oscilloscopes can also easily display and hold non-periodic waveforms. In addition to the basic voltage versus time display, modern oscilloscopes often have many additional functions. For example, automatic measurement of things like peak-to-peak -peak voltage or frequency, the ability to look at serial buses, both as bits and at higher layers, as well as the ability to do frequency domain analysis of signals, similar to a spectrum analyzer. In this presentation, we'll explain the settings used to make basic analog voltage versus time measurements using an oscilloscope. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to talk about four systems in an oscilloscope, since we make measurements and display the results by adjusting the settings of each one of these systems. These systems are the vertical system, the horizontal system, the trigger system, and the display system. Remember that our vertical axis shows voltage as a function of time. A very common task when using a scope is scaling the displayed waveform and or changing its vertical position. Most scope displays have 10 vertical divisions, and in order to scale the waveform, we use the volts per division control, which controls the amplification or attenuation of the input signal. If we increase volts per division, our waveform shrinks, and if we decrease volts per division, our waveform grows. We can use the position control to move our waveform up or down on the screen. The most important thing to keep in mind when configuring the vertical system is to use volts per division to maximize the waveform on the screen. In other words, to have the positive and negative peaks as close to the top and bottom as possible without clipping the waveform. By doing this, we ensure that we're using all of the bits of the scope's analog to digital converter. If we don't use the entire vertical scale, then we're not taking full advantage of the scope's ADC. It's also easier to see small details or features in the waveform when we maximize our use of the vertical scale. When it comes to the horizontal system, there are really two separate topics or aspects that we need to understand. These are waveform display and sample rate. Let's start with waveform display. Waveform display controls in the horizontal system are related to the horizontal axis, which corresponds to time. We can use these controls to scale the waveform and or change its horizontal position. Similar to volts per division in the vertical system, seconds per division changes the duration of each division, and thus how much or how many cycles of the waveform we see on the screen. And as before, our position control moves the waveform right or left on the screen. Unlike the vertical system, there's generally no right or wrong setting when it comes to seconds per division. The correct setting is the one that shows you the waveform characteristics or details that you're interested in. The more important aspect of the horizontal system is something called sampling. The horizontal system digitizes the input signal at a given sample rate in samples per second, or at every sampling interval. Samples are stored in memory, and together these make up a so-called waveform record. As we increase the sample rate, we get better resolution and more detail of the displayed waveform, and this in turn increases the probability that we'll see or catch infrequent events. Higher sample rates, because they produce more samples per second, do, however, create greater storage requirements. So what sample rate should we choose? You may be familiar with the Nyquist rule that states that you have to sample at twice the highest frequency to avoid aliasing. If we sample our input signal too slowly, we run the risk of getting an alias signal that may look okay, but is not an accurate representation of the sampled signal. A good general recommendation is to have a sample rate that's at least two and a half times the scope bandwidth. In other words, if you have a one gigahertz scope, you should be taking at least 2.5 giga samples per second. The good news is that for many simple applications, it's usually safe to let the scope choose the sample rate. 
The trigger system is extremely important because triggering is needed for most all oscilloscope measurements. Essentially, a trigger defines the conditions that have to be met before the scope begins an acquisition or begins taking samples. Triggering can do two different things. First, it can stabilize a repeating or periodic signal, such as a sine wave, by causing each sweep to start at a given point on the signal. But triggers can also be used to capture non-periodic single events, like a single pulse, burst, etc. It's important to set the trigger properly. Incorrect trigger configuration is a very common problem when using oscilloscopes. There are many different types of triggers, and triggers can be both analog and digital. Modern scopes can trigger on things like pulse widths, runts, glitches, etc. However, the most common form of triggering is the so-called edge trigger. In edge triggering, the user defines a voltage, and the trigger occurs when that threshold is crossed, either on the rising edge or on the falling edge of a waveform. The last system we'll discuss in this presentation is the display system. In the old days of analog scopes, the display system was little more than a cathode ray tube showing a glowing green trace. Analyzing or measuring signals often meant counting divisions on the display. Modern digital oscilloscopes have many display and measurement functions, such as zooming in and out of the signal, and using cursors or markers to make manual measurements. A large number of waveform parameters can also be automatically measured or calculated, like peak or peak-to-peak -peak voltage, frequency, rise and fall times, slew rate, crest factor, pulse counts, etc. Many of these values can also be made on a statistical basis. Let's summarize what we've learned. Basic oscilloscope operation involves four main systems. The vertical system can be used to scale and position the waveform vertically. The horizontal system is used in a similar way for the horizontal axis, but it also provides a way to change the sampling rate that's used to acquire waveforms. The trigger system starts the acquisition for both single shot and repetitive waveforms, and triggering on the rising or falling edge of a signal is the most common of the many trigger types available. Lastly, the display system provides visual results, and most scopes also include a variety of manual and automatic tools for analyzing or measuring the acquired waveforms. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Basic Oscilloscope Operation. Thanks for watching.